Last lesson, we talked about filters, sorts, and groups, basically all the ways that you can work with your Airtable data. So now that we have that underpinning, let's talk about Airtable views. Like filters, sorts, and groups, views don't actually change your data. It is just a view upon which you can take a look at certain aspects of your data. This might sound minimal or small. It is another one of these very key pieces that makes Airtable an operational spreadsheet really easy to work with your data. So today let's talk about what a view is, how to create it, and what the different types of views are. Let's hop back into our CRM example here. As you can see, we have a contacts table. You can imagine this being set up for a sales team, right? That needs to see a list of all the potential contacts they might try to sell to. So where views come into play is to take this giant list of data and filter it down or sort it down or view it in a different way such that it's more usable, it's more operational for our team. So a few of the views that I put together here are grouping it by status. So maybe seeing a list of views or a view here where you can see which records are in different statuses um, or a filter view, right? Maybe you wanna see just the data that has a status of contract sent, right? These are the people we wanna follow up with. Uh, or even maybe a Kanban, where we see our customers in this sort of left to right style where we can drag them across into different statuses, right? That's really the power of views. We get to work with our data and view it in different ways. And so to start, let's take a look at some of the different view types. So as soon as you start looking at views, you're gonna notice something called grid view. This is the default view that Airtable gives you whenever you create a new table. It's basically just saying it's unfiltered, unsorted, it's all of your data in this table. You can, from there, go ahead and edit that view by adding filters to it, let's say, you know, or grouping it. But by default, a grid view is just gonna show you all of the data that you have. So let's start by just taking a grid view and creating a new one. If we come over to this left side here, we click grid and create, we can name it. And again, maybe we wanna make this one uh, a grid view of uh, company is greater than a thousand employees, right? Now, by default, when I create this grid view, again, it's gonna be completely unfiltered um, and unsorted. So to change that, all we have to do is use the filters, groups, and sorts that we just learned how to use. So to make this work for my name here, I might filter this to company size being greater than a thousand. And there we go. And what's great about these views is that I can keep this here like this while still clicking back to my grid view to see everything whenever I want, right? And so that way I don't have to keep on going back and forth, saving a filter, or deleting it, right? Or a teammate might wanna look at the data differently. Um, I can basically just set up these views that are, are valuable for me and come back to them whenever I want. So that's a grid view. That's a very basic way to get started. Next, let's talk about the Kanban view. So a Kanban view, if you're familiar with Kanban boards, basically creates a Kanban board as part of Airtable. So an example here that would be really useful for our CRM is to create a Kanban board that is basically grouped on status so we can move different contacts across the board from step by step, right? So uh, to do that, just as you would expect, you come over to create here and click Kanban. Maybe we call this one, um, my Kanban and create it. And it'll ask us what's the stacking field, right? And basically show some of the ones that you, you probably wanna use. So let's use status, like I mentioned, and click done, and there we go. And now all of our contacts are sorted or stacked, as Airtable says, by the status they're in. So we have a contact here that's been uncontacted. We can move it into item being, or meeting being scheduled, right? Um, or let's say we actually close a customer, we can move them into close one. Once you're in this Kanban view, you can hit customize cards and show what you want to have added to these cards. So maybe we want an email and their title, but really whatever you like. And just like an Airtable grid view, you can add contacts directly here as well, and they will show up on our Kanban board. So let's talk about two more views here, just so you can keep getting the hang of it. Uh, let's talk about our timeline and our calendar views. So again, these are basically little mini apps that Airtable provides out of the box. And as you might guess with a calendar view, it's going to create something that looks like a calendar. The key thing is that you'll need a date field for this to work. 
So if none of your data has any date fields, you can't use the calendar field. But if you do, um, let's say here I have a, a date that is pilot start date. We can go ahead and hit done. And there we go. So our records show up here. This is essentially grouped by the date in our field. And we can, again, move them around to change data as well. So this is really useful for things like launch calendars. You can imagine uh, a content marketing calendar that is totally uh, built on Airtable data. Um, but of course, anything with a date can be useful if you have this calendar view. Let's then talk about timelines. So timeline views, we'll go ahead and create it here as well. Just like you would have guessed, you're gonna need to create a start date here. And let's do an end date and hit next and next. And we don't really need to group them for now. Let's hit next again. So what this is doing is creating a timeline where you can kind of scroll through and view your data this way. So for this one, uh, I've basically set the uh, left side to start on a pilot start date field and the right side to end on a pilot end date. If we want to hop over to our grid view, we can see this in the table format, right? Pilot start and pilot end. This is exactly the data that is powering our timeline over here, right? So if we change this a little bit earlier on Matthew Bussell, um here, this data gets updated. Same if we go the other direction. So that is how you work with dates and timelines and calendar views. You basically get the idea. Finally, let's talk about the form view. So a form view is a little bit different than the rest of the views we just looked at. Those views like Kanbans and grids are all about viewing and editing your data. What a form view does, which is a bit different, is it lets you collect data. It actually is a form that you can send to someone outside of your org that you want them to add data into your Airtable spreadsheet without having access to the rest of it. Many people use form views literally as a wait list. So they'll keep all of their potential customers in an Airtable base and have them sign up on an Airtable form. So let's get into how you can set up this form view yourself. To create a form view, you're gonna come over to the left-hand side and click on form. Now, forms used to be just like a view. Uh, recently, Airtable actually moved that out and put them into Airtable interfaces. Again, this makes a lot of sense because forms are really more of an interface than it is a view like the others. Um, but if you hit continue, it'll take you over to this new form builder. And here you'll see basically what we want to title our form as well as the fields that we would give someone to fill out. Uh, so let's just make a new form here. Let's, let's make this pretty. We can add a cover image. Let's take whale sync here. And let's say we're making a form for our wait list, right? Maybe we'll put this on our website and let anyone that wants early access to whale sync, we'll call this whale sync wait list, and they can fill that out. And maybe the description is sign up for early access to whale sync. Now by default, Airtable just adds all of the fields that you have in that table as something that someone might fill out. But some of these are ones we wouldn't want someone to actually fill out in a form. So we can get rid of them and take them out of the form ourselves. So if we take, let's say, we want their first name, their last name, their title. We don't really need the department. So let's just remove that. Um, we definitely want their email. We don't want to have a status for them. That's something we would do internally. Same with done um, and rating. But this is about right. First name, last name, an email, LinkedIn. Uh, what's really nice, you can preview this. So this is literally what the page will look like online when someone fills it out. This looks good, we can hit publish. And once you've published the form, Airtable will let you create the link to it. So you can restrict this to only users who have access to the base. That's you know something that you have locked down. But here for this form, I actually want this to be available to anyone, no password. And we can literally copy this link or embed it directly in our site. If we pop this into a new tab, when I see this form here, let's fill it out. We'll do, you know, Michael McDaniels, title, CEO, Mike at gmail.com. We'll skip that one and hit submit. And if we go back to our data here and we go to our contacts and our grid view, we can see that that form filled out all the data in our spreadsheet. 
So that's really all there is to Airtable Forms. You can obviously customize them really deeply to fit whatever you need, but they're just another way that Airtable becomes something more than a spreadsheet, an operational spreadsheet, if you will. So that's Airtable Forms. You can now work with your data, view it in a bunch of different ways, even ask people to add data into your spreadsheet. Go off, make some forms, make some views, enjoy.